What is up, Scrub Fam? I am back with another video. This is to go over the Richmond Regionals, which I had an amazing time. Had a really good time. It was a super long day, but it was great. Uh, before I get into the stuff itself, let me go ahead and talk about my sponsor, uh, Alec Pastrana and Bearded Collectibles team bearded please be sure to check out alex shop if you're down in the florida area it's brand new it's beautiful and with fighters coming out he's gonna be doing fighters tournaments so that comes out friday and then of course we have the expansion sets coming out so please be sure to pick up your expansion product you're gonna need it as we go forward because overwhelm is overwhelming if that makes any sense but anyway so please be sure to check out beardercollectibles.com. You can pick up a team bearded hat, team bearded shirt, team bearded hoodie, which is wonderful. I wore it all day on Saturday. And of course, you can pick up your 3XG Scrub Fam version 1.0 shirts. So please be sure to do that. You don't want to be Scrub Fam without truly being Scrub Fam. So be Scrub Fam. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into Richmond itself. So leading up to the event itself, we knew the format, right? We knew it. We knew that Agro Vegeta was you know, up there. We knew that Mecha Freeze was still public enemy number one because of its performance at Las Vegas in 14 making day two. We knew that Soul Striker was really good. I mean, we've always known that, but it had two of the top four spots in Las Vegas. We knew that Cell has fallen off uh, quite a bit from what he was before, but he's still a presence in the metagame, as Anthony Hernandez likes to show us, as well as a, a few other people that made builds that made it into the top 32. And then, of course, we had Red and Green Androids, which is probably the only deck in the entire game that really is just, you. it's hard to interact with because it, it just is. It just does what it does. It's not exciting. It's not flashy, but it is effective. So that was another one of the decks we had to build and look out for when it came to Richmond itself. So when it comes to my preparation, I myself had already narrowed myself down to just a handful of decks the week leading up to the event that were all relatively tuned, felt pretty good. I had done a lot of playtesting with Pat O'Neill leading up to the event itself to figure out decks that we think would be a good fit, as well as decks that I, you know, had on my own radar, stuff I was considering playing. And I was pretty much down between Agro Vegeta, which I had played at Las Vegas and was really comfortable with, but I did have a friend of mine named uh, Levi, he's newer to the game, who needed a deck to play, and so I figured an aggro deck to teach him would be much more straightforward, would help him with his results. So that kind of ended up taking that out of my radar. Next, of course, was Mecha Frieza. I was more so sold on the red Mecha Friezas. The thing is about Mecha Frieza itself and the way I play the game, I really don't like to play decks that include like a lot of high variance when it comes to their draws. And me, whenever I was playtesting the deck, I would just draw a lot, like really flat a lot of the time. Like I wouldn't draw the gas like I see a lot of my opponents doing. So I really wanted to take that off my radar really quickly. Not necessarily because the deck is bad, but I just don't want to have to leave myself the chance as much. And then so from there, I came down to Red Green Androids and playing Soul Striker. Red Green Androids the deck is very good. I had a really good, you know, record playing with it in playtesting, and I understand that the deck wins. It can get people to day two. But me, I know that if I'm going to play nine rounds in a tournament, I don't want to play something that I'm not going to enjoy, and I do not enjoy playing that deck. That deck is hella boring. Like, no flash, no spice. Like, I get it, it just gets the job done, but it's like, it's like being a janitor, you know? That's what it feels like. You know, I'm, do I'm doing this job, I'm making an honest living. But it's not what you really want you know it's not what you're really after uh so that led me ultimately to playing a soul striker variant so testing with pat o'neill leading up to the event we he was on blue soul striker and i really like the deck too and i like the way it worked but we ended up having i ended up seeing an issue after playing more games with it when friends got into town which shout out to eric malone and david pena thank you guys for coming and hanging out and staying uh, I had an amazing time hanging out with you guys and playtesting and just being able to discuss the game. Especially Eric, you just joined in the game, which, guys, be on the lookout. Eric Malone is going to be winning events in no time. Like, the guy is just an absolute animal, amazing card game player. But, like, playing the games, I just figured out that, like, the top end of the deck, I wasn't necessarily impressed with. So the deck had a really good mid-game, but when it came to late game, like, if you weren't really in the Golden Frieza lock, you really had a lot of issues. And so that pushed me back into green. And so from there, I built a... I, I threw a list together that... I liked the configuration of a lot, and then was like, okay, I'm just going to play this. Like, legitimately, I, I playtested one game with the deck itself, and that was against David on Friday, and that was before we even went over to my buddy Thomas Ingle's place and did even more late-night playtesting to figure out what we were going to play in. So I played one game with the deck the entire time, decided just to play it because I didn't want to play Androids, and unfortunately, I had to lend out some cards because of the blue green aggro vegeta deck so i needed to kind of split kales and promo gohans so i did that so that's why my list looks kind of funny trust me i know that ultimately i'd love to play four gohans and four kales 
and I understand that I probably could have gotten the cards, but I just felt it was too late in the night to ask. And then during the day, I didn't want to have to bother anybody with it or track anybody down. And I was like, this list is good enough, and I have some reasons for the choices that I made anyway, so I'm going to go with this configuration. And so that led me to the deck that I played. So going into my rounds, so round, round one I played against Red Blue Vegeta, and luckily for me, my sideboard was strictly dedicated to Vegeta and aggro matchups, as well as, you know, mirror, like some of the mirror, but the, my, my main deck was actually pretty, like, pretty well positioned against the mirror, because the way I also built the deck was I wanted my version to play the control role. So I wanted to be the person that was often reacting uh, and also wanted to go bigger. And so that's why I, I, the, I built my deck the way that I did. And so I played against Red Blue, Aggro Vegeta, which I lost game one, which I expected. I didn't see a results of training, which is fine. So I lost game one. You know, I didn't get tilted or anything. I was like, okay, cool. So I went to my sideboard. I signed in all 15 cards. So my sideboard, I could sign up to 13 or 15, depending on the type of aggro deck it is. But I sided in the entire 15 for that matchup itself to really improve it. And then I won the next two games back to back with no real issues after after I went to sideboard. Round two, I then played against a red blue yellow Mecha Frieza, so Mecha Frieza Buhan. In game one, he necessarily didn't really get to play. Like he didn't really get off to that hot start that he wants to. So I ended up being able to just result a training at five energy with no real opposition, and then just take over the game and win from there after developing a board. And because once I saw him starting to struggle to awaken, I was like, I'm just not going to attack him anymore. I'm just going to build my board because he won't be able to deal with it. In game two, he got off to a good start. The game was a lot closer, a lot more interactive. But again, we got to that space where we were playing that how he's going to how how was he supposed to awaken game? And again, I just built my board and then was. Able able to go for alpha strike late in the game and just close the game out even though we got a buhan on board and so essentially i just stalled him out with his buhan would combo over to stop him from killing any of my threats and dealing damage with miraculous underneath the buhan and then i even let myself go down to one on purpose because i wanted to draw two extra cards going into my turn so i could guarantee the combo kill on my turn uh round three i played against a red blue yellow aggro mecha frieza deck this deck was really good it, it was a really good opponent that i played against uh he had not dropped any games that day at all, so you know not only just matches but games in general. And I ended up taking that match 2-0. And both games were really good, like they're really close games. But luckily, I felt pretty good in that matchup. And again, my sideboard plan against Aggro was very good, very strong. And even my my main deck was also geared to play against Red because I figured that Red was going to be really popular going into this tournament. Uh, round four, I played against the Mirror against Ryan Se Severin. And basically, what that came down to was. He drew more removal, and he drew more 10k boost, which that happens, and so that's fine. So I lost a mirror match, I lost it 2-0. So game one, same thing happened, even though I was on the play, hit my energy first, but I was only playing the lower part of my curve, and that was pretty frustrating to me. I just couldn't find the bigger stuff to just start hitting removal and sticking threats. And then in game two, the same thing happened. And, but the problem was in game two was after my mulligan, my hand was just saturated with big cards that I had to charge because I had to make my energy drops for the turn. And so that ended up putting me behind in that matchup too. Even though I play more removal main deck, I still ended up falling behind because I either had to charge it. And again, he ended up having more removal and more 10k boost. So again, that's fine. I don't mind that at all. Um, the next round, I ended up playing against another Frieza deck, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it feels right. What was that, round five? Yeah, round five. I played against a yellow, blue, green Mecha Frieza deck. This was Chris Sock. His deck was really well tuned. Uh, I lost this matchup 2 0. In games one and two, he opened up with turn one Manaka, turn one Objection, and then turn two Objection again. And so he got way ahead on energy. And game one, I took him by surprise with one of the cards in my deck, and he got a little scared. But by that point, it was already too late. I was down to one life. He was at four life. So he had the game one and wrapped up. He just needed to be able to start deploying threats again. And so he drew the right side of his deck in both games, and that's what his deck's designed to do, and he got those wins. So that was fine. Round six, I just lost. So then I played against a Soul Striker Mirror. Yeah. I played against a Soul Striker Mirror again. Uh, this time, it was more of a variant that it was aggro and ran full power trunks. Uh, actually, no, I'm forgetting around. So after I lost to Chris Sock, I then played against a red-green Android deck. In game one, he was pushing for game. I was at three life. He overextended on his combo, thinking I was at two life. And then I ended up... just He, he dumped his hand, thinking I was at two life. And so it, it, it ended up ending 
that way. So I ended up winning the game on my turn when I had just, you know, I had more cards, more resources. He was down to nothing, and he just spent his whole entire hand thinking that I was at two as opposed to three. And it was it was probably because the sleeves I was using, it wasn't intentional, but I was just using the orange eclipse sleeves. And the way I stack my life is I do two rows of four, so I do four top, four bottom. And so he just saw my life, and it looked like, to him, it looked like it was at two instead of three. And so he comboed his entire hand, and I was like, okay, I'll take two okay bye like you know and so the next game you know i did my i was like you know hey i don't want that to happen again like even though he didn't ask you know what my life total was before he went for game like he just swung so the next game i just put my life out in twos so it was easier for him to see and game two i won handedly there were no issues at all i just locked the game out relatively quickly and just ended up taking that one and then i played against the like i said i played against another soul striker mirror i won that mirror those games were actually really good and then I played against Red Green Androids in round eight. And not going to say my opponent was intentionally slow playing for a draw. But he was very thoughtful with his plays. And you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. And game So game one, he scooped me up real bad. I lost real bad. I was cool with that. Game two, though... He, game one, he made. Game one took a long time. He scooped me up real bad. I, there's nothing I could do. I didn't see results, so I had a really hard time playing the game. And he got an early sell that game too. Game two, I'm playing like lightning fast because I need to go ahead and get this game two in just so we don't go to time and he wins off of technicality. So I play lightning fast in game two and I get the W. Game three, my hand is super defensive, unfortunately, and so we're getting close to time. Like we're in time, we're on turns, and my hand is a bunch of 10k boost and negates. I have no way to actually just win the game, so I have to play for the draw at this point. Which, it's it's sad. It sucks. I didn't want the draw. I really wanted the win, so I could just go ahead and get to 6-2 and two, as opposed to being 5-2-1. and one. But that matchup ended up in a draw, which I'm fine with. That was probably the better result anyway, because Red Green Androids can be a tough matchup. If he would have went to Game 3, he could have won. So, I'm going to take it as is. He was a really good opponent, really good player. He played the deck really well. So I'm not going to fault him for anything. I think that he made the right decision, what was going to be the best interest of both players at the point in the game that we were. So it was fine. And then the last round, last round was brutal. I had to play against a teammate, um, Roger. He was playing a super sweet deck. Like he was playing Cell Leader and he was playing the Zamasu engine. So four drops Zamasu, two drop Goku Black, and the big 10 drops Zamasu in his deck. And so game one, I don't know what he's doing at all. I don't know until after I charge my card, which actually, since I was main decking this card, and actually running this card in my 65 total, actually gave me an edge in the matchup. And so after I charge this card, he then charges a time ring. And once he charges the time ring, I'm like, what have I done? He's an, he's an axe murderer. Like, I'm done for, right? And so game one, he does everything that he wants to do. He has his way with me. You know, he's he's gentle about it. You know, it's not like he just took it from me. You know, he was like Aziz Ansari when it came to this. Like, you know, he thought it was consensual. And so next game, game two, the jig is up. I know what he's doing. And so I prioritize the two cards in my deck that can win the game for me. And unfortunately in game two... And I understand why he was doing this. He was trying to win the game. But we got to a point in the game state where he had no outs. His deck was too low. He didn't have a way to win the game in a, in a good amount of turns. And so he just kept drawing and drawing and drawing. And that drove the time down in the round to seven minutes until he finally said, I concede I can't win this game. And so game three, we have seven minutes left in the round. We're playing incredibly fast. Um, you know, I do everything I'm supposed to do to, to win the game. Unfortunately, I think I sideboarded incorrectly after talking with Pat after the game, just because the way his deck worked, I didn't need to keep, I actually didn't need to keep my 10k boost draw card in the deck, which I know sounds crazy, but I didn't need to. And I should have just sided those out, been super aggressive, sided in all my creatures and just tried to go for a game as quickly as possible. Um, so that was my error, but it ended up coming down to me. I had done what I needed to do throughout the course of the game. I established threats. I had presence. I had him down the one life. It was his turn. I thought I had enough life to win the game, uh, but then he cast out of nowhere a second drop, a second ten drop Samasu, and then just eats my life away because I had no cards in hand. And so 
it sucked. I really wish that we would have had more time to play that game three. I wish I wouldn't have had to been so rushed, but it sucks anyway when you have to play against a teammate in general in a situation like that, but I'm glad that Roger got the win, and he got to show off a really unique deck. The coolest deck I played against the entire tournament, probably the coolest deck of the tournament, and something that, shoot, I'm, I'm probably going to build it myself, because the deck was super sweet. So, that was my kind of tournament report. So let me go ahead and go over to the deck I played. Uh, so this is the variant of Soul Striker that I played. So in the top, we're going to have my actual main deck. So of course, Super Saiyan God, Sun Goku, and then blue, Sun Goku, Soul Striker, whatever. So basically, front side, you untap one energy when you swing. Back side, you untap two energy. And if you have five or more energy, you gain plus 5k. And so, the reason why this deck is so good is because once you're awakened, you have the best leader in the game, hands down. And so, your deck is just full of good cards. And so when you play a lot of good cards and you have a leader that is the best leader in the game, once you get to the late game, you can start deploying multiple threats. And then you have a big leader that's swinging at your opponent every turn and forces them to burn cards. So let me go to my extra card suite real quick. Uh, four Cincy Beans. This is mostly, it's a good defensive card depending on the matchup that you're playing against. And then sometimes, mostly, I just use it as a way to play an extra threat on a turn that I normally couldn't play. And I really don't want to play Unyielding Spirit Trunks because it only gets you the combo and gets you the untap on your turn. Four Weeks Coercion because Negates, I felt, were really impactful impactful in a lot of matchups and I didn't want to go down to three copies. Three objections. Three objections instead of four, mostly because objection wasn't a card that I needed to see. And I stress that. It wasn't a card I needed to see and I wanted to cut down on my extras. And then three result of training, it's mostly because I wanted to split it with a certain number of furious yells after talking with um, a teammate. Uh, Fern from our group and Team Bearded. Uh, you know, I had four result in the main deck before because, like, you really want to see the card, and he convinced me to split it with Furious Shell, which I think it was the right decision. I saw enough result to be fine, and then always was awakened in time without any issues throughout the tournament. Uh, when it comes to, you know, my cantrips, so I had four Energy Boosted Majin Buu, four Bundle Curiosity Sun Goku. Both these cards are just great at any point in the game because it's something where you can just net yourself an extra card it, just from untapping some energy and just being able to play an additional card and it just helps you use your energy more efficiently your 410k boost you have to play them unless you're playing against roger's deck then you can side these out because they're not necessarily you're never going to play them uh two light of hope trunks so this card is was actually pretty cool for me it forced it forced people to spend removal on it because i would always get to the point where it would be a 20k by itself and make my leader a 25k and so somebody would have to spend removal on it on their turn just to be able to get it off the board because my leader was just becoming too threatening and so i like these uh, whenever i played against an aggressive deck these would always be the first two cards to come out just because you're you're not really concerned about getting to five energy and playing this three drop you need to play something that's more impactful and you need to play something that is just going to make you better on the defense as well as just give you more off options offensively to be able to you know develop a bigger board state three iron hammer justice hinder 16 i loved this in the main deck this past weekend i played against a bunch of red and this was always great and also i had to explain to somebody when we were talking about revenge blockers and removal itself and revenge blockers are removal that your opponent can't interact with even if they have cold bloodlust and so I like this card because it just acted as three additional pieces of removal, of course, in the mirror, but also acted as that it, whenever I'm playing against a Cold Blood Lust deck. So I loved having Iron Hammer of Justice 16 in the deck, especially whenever I played against a red, this was just a huge boon. They basically just had to almost pack it in because once I dropped these, their Gohan was going to die, their Jiren was going to die, their Buhan was going to die. I had no issues whatsoever. So running this main felt really good. And like I said, this deck's more so controlling. And so playing a three-drop attacker wasn't something I was necessarily interested in. I was more so about just stalling to get to my late game and go from there. And then next we had four energy boosts to Beerus. I went with four Beerus because he kills anything, of course. And I really value double strike because I need ways to close the game. A lot of the leaders in this game already self-awaken themselves and get their life totals down pretty low for you. So all you have to do is just get them to four three or two and then you can close out the game with any of your attackers that come onto the board uh two determined super saiyan sun gohan two hidden awakening and kill i wanted to play four four trust me it's not something that i did not want to do uh but i said i, I you know i let my friend borrow two copies of each to put into the aggro vegeta deck that he was playing uh just so he you know had some game if he ever got to a turn game that went past turn four and the cards are just really good in that deck because they have crit and chompas and so i just decided to split it which ultimately it wasn't too bad because the cards that I had to play in their place actually came in handy a lot for me. Uh, so, for instance, I played two Fury Shell Vegetas. This was just another option to awaken. A lot of the Soul Striker decks either just rely on result 
uh, or just Fury Shell, whereas I wanted to play some number of both, and that provided me a lot of game, whether if I was playing in the mirror or if I was just playing against anything that's trying to stall me. And then I played two Raging Attacker Vegeta. I really like this deck, this card against Bloodlust decks, because you can pass on your turn, have four energy up, and then you can play this on their turn, and if they try and Bloodlust it, that's fine, but you still have a 20k Double Striker that you're going to have coming back on your turn. I also like the size of the body being a 20k, of course, and then having Double Strike is pretty relevant, like I said, because most leaders self-awaken in this game. So you really just need to get your opponent down to 4, 3, or 2, and then you only need a couple attacks to go ahead and seal the deal. And I like that this only costs 4. But in general, ideally, these would be another copy of Kale, another copy of Gohan, and we'd move on from there. Uh, next, we played 5-drop returning Evil Golden Frieza, just a singleton. Uh, I cast this ca card a lot this weekend, uh, mostly to either bounce a removal spell that I just played, or if it was something as little as bouncing a boo or a bundle, just to have an extra cantrip for the turn, or even just bouncing itself if I didn't have a removal in hand so I could deploy it the next turn and just start cleaning up my opponent's board. And when it was on the board as an attacker, 25k with double strike is a big body, and so that always paid off for me. And I ran four Super Saiyan Go Tanks because you have to run it. It's the best card in the entire deck because of the fact that it's going to be a one-drop 25k double strike for you that draws a card. And so works out incredibly well. So you play it. It's often one of your finishers. Uh, and to Zeno the Plane God. I main deck this because I needed to shore up my removal. So just in case my opponent's board states got out of control. And I, like I said, I don't run the extra go on or the extra Kale. So I needed something that could kind of help me break mirrors or break any deck that could deploy a lot of threats before me. So for instance, like the Mecha Frieza deck that gets ahead on energy really fast. I could deploy a Zeno, wipe the board completely, and then now it's just my leader versus theirs, and my leader's my leader awakened is always better than theirs. And so Zeno just lets you reset the game. You both start at five cards, you both start even, and you're good to go. And this also was the card that was giving me the edge against Roger in the last round, because this is the only thing that can deal with Samasu. And so Zeno, <laughs> you know, I'm glad I picked this egg, glad I configured it the way I did, because this card put me in a position to have a chance to win and get into top 32, which congrats again to Roger for making top 32, but I had the tech, so it was pretty sweet. And Zeno, whenever you cast it, it's the coolest thing, it's the coolest feeling in the entire world to get that entire board, you know, reset, board wipe, and then your opponent's just like, what? I, someone just played a Zeno against me? And you're like, yeah, bro, Zeno's busted. Zeno's OP. Um, so now let me go and move on to my sideboard. So three ready to strike Piccolos, uh, blocker, which is relevant against aggro. And then of course, at the end of their turn, they have to discard down to six. This, in, this effect actually ended up working out for me a bunch of times because you force your opponent to have a Sun Goten Family of Justice or force them to have a removal. If they don't have it, then guess what? Their hand's going down to six. And this was actually really relevant in a ton of matchups and helped me out a lot, but also just having the blocker and being able to create the additional board presence was big and that's why i paired it with two fully trained super saiyan sun gohan and so these would come in oftentimes against aggro because once you get to turn four a lot of times they're not playing a lot of threats so you don't need to play removal so you play the four drop fully trained sun gohan instead and then that get will get you one plus two bodies so now my board state is two things that they have to think about and deal with whereas their board state's usually nothing and so getting that additional board presence was really big, and just having a way to get another blocker out on the table to stop myself from dying was always big too. And then of course the effect was really relevant against aggro. And then I'd bring in three Sun Goten Family of Justice. You need this card in this format. There's too many impactful cards that cost three or less that you want to be able to clear off the table, especially those combo cards that people are playing in the main deck now, just to be able to get those threats on the board. This just goes ahead and just takes care of it with no issues for you, so I put I would side in three. And then three, we Sacred Guard. This card was super clutch for me. Vegeta has the hardest time against this card. You side it in, and it's a huge boon. You can usually drop a lot of removal just to make space for this, because again, like you're playing against aggro, you're not going to need it. This was also great against decks that played a lot of removal so if it was the mirror or if it was cell side of this in this was great against the zamasu deck i played against like the cell zamasu deck i played against because he couldn't kill this threat with zamasu and so we sacred guard was huge for me and always sided in against aggro and then two full power energy just additional negates would come in a lot of times against aggro you just end up cutting your objections completely you cut your fury shells just rely on results of training you'd cut some of your removal you'd cut your zenos cut your light of hope trunks and a lot of times the entire board would come in and i already talked about the two fully trained super saiyan sun gohan and then lastly was two piercing super saiyan two sun gohan so in a matchup where i felt zeno wasn't relevant that would just be sided off for piercing super saiyan two sun gohan to help close games 
And against, you know, some decks, my entire sideboard would come in against some, just a handful of cards. Against the others, just these two would come in over the Zenos if I felt like the Zenos weren't needed. Otherwise, going forward, things that I would change to this deck itself. Um, honestly, I would really just want to fit in either a third Kale, third Gohan, or just four and four. I think the, the cards are just too impactful not to play. I think they would have helped me in some instances because of just having access to four mana removal on four is big. Even though I played a full eight copies of four energy removal, um, but just having those eight cards total, like the Gohans and the Kales, would have been really good for me. But honestly, I think the deck performed great. Uh, I ended up going five, three, and one, unfortunately, which again is only a 55% win percentage, and I really need to get to 66 and higher in order to be able to start making top cuts. I thought I had a really, like, the progress I made for this event was actually pretty astounding. Uh, not necessarily because of my gameplay. Like, I, I think I played the game really tight, really well, but mostly just my attitude getting through the rounds, which, yeah, playing nine rounds sucks. We started at 9.30. I didn't finish until 11. I was exhausted. It was a pain, but I was able to keep myself focused during most of my games except as you know in the last round against roger i was really feeling it but once you know i was like okay once i found the way to win the game i was really energized by that and just played to my outs the best i could to try and win those games except for again making the sideboarding error so otherwise i think the deck performed really well again i would make sure that i ran four gohans and four gales going forward if you wanted to but honestly i really liked the fury shells so i'd want to keep those so maybe just three kales three gohans but because the Fury Shells were a huge boon to me because they're another way to kill just anything your opponent has and get yourself down from 6 to 5 or 5 to 4, which is really helpful. And then, of course, uh, I also really like the Raging Attackers too, but maybe move those to the sideboard, and that would be a good plan for you too. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and this Richmond Regional Recap. I hope you learned something. Sorry this video was so long. I'm going to go eat some dinner. I'm going to drink some beer. I had a really amazing time. Eric Malone, David Pena, I love you. Tom Single, I love you. Levi, I love you. Pat, I love you. Everyone else, I love you. Thank you guys again so much. Have a good night. Okay, bye.